Welcome back to LDB Games. I'm Lord Darth Balls. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video, and this video is part two of how to build a well-balanced team. In part one, I went through the three key factors that you need to consider when you're deciding which champions to put in your team, right? Sustainability, control, and damage. Now, in each of those categories, there is an element of debuffs for sustainability you have decreased attack for example in control you have decreased speed you have decreased turn meter you have various uh stun freeze sleep debuffs things like that and then in damage you have decreased defense and weakened debuffs now when it comes to landing a debuff you have to consider a few things the skill that places the debuff and the stats that your champion has in order to land it. That includes accuracy, and it also includes the resistance of the champion that you're attacking. So when it comes to accuracy versus resistance, this is some data that has been mined from the game. You'll forgive me, I don't know where this came from. This was sent to me uh, months ago in my clan. And it's unclear of who mined this, so if I, you know, if, if you're watching this and you mind this let me know i'll give you guys credit for it whatever this is an incredible tool so this helps you understand where you need to be right so let's take a look at this for a second okay let's take a look up here at zero so this is accuracy minus resistance and this is the chance that you have to land that debuff and this is after the chance that the skill has so right a good hit, we have a strong or a normal hit, <clears throat> we have 100% chance to land a debuff, and now we go to an accuracy versus resistance check. So for sake of argument, let's say that my champion has 100 accuracy, and the champion that I'm attacking has 100 resist. That means that accuracy minus resistance is zero. Add an even keel you have a 92.5% chance of landing that debuff. And you'll notice, as you start increasing accuracy, where the resistance remains the same, it increases, but not all that much, right? You go, at most, 96.9 to infinity percent chance of landing a debuff. So, with an accuracy versus resistance check, there is no 100% guarantee to land a debuff. Now, there's a sweet spot, right? Obviously, you don't want to be at 92.5. You want to get closer to this 96, 97%. And you can see here, as you cross 30, plus 30 accuracy, accuracy upwards of plus 65, you start to level off, right? So that 35 to 65 accuracy over resistance is really kind of the sweet spot. So let's take, you know, a, a good rule of thumb with dungeons is you multiply the level of the dungeon that you're facing times 10, and that is what type of resistance that boss will have. So on Dragon 20, for sake of argument, Dragon will have 200 resistance. So for the most effective chance to land a debuff, you want to have at least 235 accuracy. And once you reach that 300 accuracy level, there really is no, it's diminishing, it's the law of diminishing returns. You now, any more that you add on doesn't really do you any good besides adding a 0.00000001% chance of landing it, which is negligible. So, Ideally, when you have a resistance of an enemy, you want 30 to 65 accuracy more than that resistance. So to recap, there are three main factors that contribute to whether you land a debuff. There's the type of hit that you place, whether it's a, a weak, a normal, a strong, or a no-hit attack. There's the percent chance of landing the debuff based on the skill that your champion has, and there's an accuracy versus resistance check. Now, I was talking about affinity, right? With void champions, there's no weak hits. 
So Madam Cerise on her A1, it's only a 20% chance of placing Fear. However, there is no weak hit potential to ruin that. So technically speaking, if Madam Cerise was uh, a Force champion, let's say, and was attacking a Spirit champion, overall your chance is below 20% because there's still that chance of landing a weak hit. The second thing, right, the percentage of landing a debuff. You'll have skills that are just 100%. So right here, Madam Cerise, this doesn't even have a chance to do it. This just removes all buffs from enemies. So right here, you don't even have a hit on this either. There is only one check that this game makes to determine whether you are removing these buffs and whether you are placing these buffs, and that's the resistance versus accuracy check. Now, in PvE content, excluding the Doom Tower, you don't ever need to have a champion over 300 accuracy. It's, it's a waste of gear. You can focus on min-maxing other aspects of your champion's stats. However, when it comes to the arena, the accuracy versus resistance check is huge because you got to remember, you can have people who build champions with super high accuracy, right? In order for a champion to land a debuff or remove a debuff from my Duchess in the arena, they would need to have at least 335 accuracy to have a substantial chance of having an effect. So when it comes to building an accuracy-based champion for the arena, there is no limit to the accuracy that you need. Right, the, the level of accuracy that you're going to need in the arena is determined by the level of players that you're facing. Right, You know high resistance teams will have very high total team power. And so you know that you'll need super high accuracy for that team. Now when it comes to getting these stats on your champions, right... How you build out your gear is, you know, unique to everybody, but there are some common themes that you want, right? When you do have a champion six star, you can throw an accuracy banner on them, which is a really great way to beef up your accuracy before you start working on your standard gear. So you can pull some, you can start min-maxing on your gear. You also have your great haul. Right, accuracy is one of the most important stats in your great haul, and so I mean, you can see here I focused on accuracy for my first 10. Um, I'm probably going to do that as well for the third one. You need three in these new quests, so I'm probably going to be focusing on uh, force accuracy. And then you have the actual gear that you decide to place on your champion. Now, depending on how much accuracy you can get from your great haul and from your uh, your jewelry, right, because you can also pull accuracy from uh, amulets, have the chance of having accuracy on them, will decide whether you throw an accuracy chest plate on your champion. Now, having an accuracy chest plate on your champion can reduce other stats, right? So I talked about my royal guard before. Where is he? My royal guard before. I have an attack percentage chest plate on him because I... I wasn't prioritizing accuracy, right? I did get an accuracy, a nice maxed out accuracy banner over here. I have the accuracy from the Great Hall. I have a little perception bonus here. So I then pumped up attack. If you're having trouble with survivability on your damage dealers, an HP chest is an excellent idea. Uh, me, I'm a big fan of min-maxing damage. You can see my Trunda even has a, an attack chest plate on her and so on and so forth. So that's it, guys. That's the basics on accuracy, landing debuffs, and building a debuffer. Did this help you? Do you guys have any questions? Let me know in the comments if you're having trouble figuring out the accuracy levels you need, figuring out whether you're able to land that debuff. I'm more than willing to help. Guys, if this video helped you at all, if you liked it, click that like button. Smash the subscribe button to see some more content from me as I launch it. And guys, I've been Lord Darth Balls. Enjoy your raid.